Okay, we are back. We're looking at math. This is math 200. We're in chapter 8. We're looking at 8.2. We're on the note packet. And um, this is starting off on page 4. Page 4 of the note packet, 8.2. And so we're looking at square root 3 times the square root of 5. When you have square root times square root, you can actually multiply the numbers. You can write it all under the same root, and that is the square root of 15, okay? And I guess these aren't equations. These are just um, expressions that we're simplifying. So instead of going downward, you could just go downward and say the square root of 15 also instead of going this way. All right, two. We've got the cube root of four times the cube root of two. Oh, and so this is interesting. So you do that, that is the cube root of eight, but the cube root of eight happens to be a perfect cube. So now you can bust out the equal sign and say that is equal to two. The cube root of eight is two. All right. And then they kind of show you, look, if you have the square root of two over a, times the square root of b over 3. You can set that all under the same root. So 2 over a times b over 3. And then that is equal to 2b over 3a. With the square root sign on it. So you can only do that when the index is the same. So since these were both cube roots, we could multiply them. Those are both square roots, so we can multiply them. If they're not the same, it's, um, it becomes a little more complicated. So let's take a look at um, examples, simplify the expressions, the square root of five over, um, oops, it's all one thing, the big old square root of five sixteenths. So that is the square root of five over the square root of 16. You can't do the square root of five, um, that just stays the square root of five. It's an irrational, but the square root of 16 can be simplified to a 4. All right. So now here comes a trickier kind of um, part. The square root of 40, what we can do with that is there's a list of perfect squares. When you take a number times itself, it's a perfect square. So like the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. You could work backwards. You could say, look, 5, and then 5 times 5 is 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So the square root of 36 is 6. And so on. You can make this list, the square root of 49, the square root of 64, the square root of 81, and the square root of 100. Those are perfect squares. Okay, so what you can do is you find a perfect square, this, this side of it, this perfect square, or no, this side of it, rather, sorry, this side of it. So you find a perfect square as a factor in here. So look, that is the square root of 4, perfect, times the square root of 10. Now, it isn't anything. You, you can't do anything that you want. You, I've had students go, oh, I want to do the square root of 2 times the square root of 20. That doesn't work. Because 2 is not perfect. It's not in here. And neither is 20. 25 is, but not 20. So you need the first one that you pull out has to be perfect. And then this is kind of the leftover bin. So perfects and leftovers. And then you take the square root of 4, which is 2. 2 square roots of 10. And done. All right. There is another way to attack it. I had a student of mine. Her name was, I'm pretty sure it was Emily. It was many, many, many years ago. And she uh, was really creative and she thought about it like this. She said, look, I'll break it down into its prime factorization. Remember how that works. Like 4 times 10, 2 times 2, prime numbers only, 2 times 5. So she said, look, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. You look at the index, which in this case is a 2, and that's the key to get out. She said it's like a prison, and that's the key to get out of prison, is groups of 2 in this case. So there's a group of 2. But it isn't a happy story to get out of the prison. Um, only one ever lives. So 2 <laughs> is the only one that got out, and then this one's stuck, and this one's stuck, because there's only one each, so 2 times 5 is... So that's a different way of thinking of it, to 
square roots of 10. Like I said, she's really creative. Now, um, she didn't exactly invent that. She invented the story that went along with it. Um, but um, I always uh, thought it was interesting because after that we called it, and we didn't call it the Emily method, we called it the uh, prison break method. And so um, I've seen it in other math texts. They'll call that the prime factorization way or method or whatever. But um, I liked I liked her little story. It uh, it got some traction. Now uh, you can do that every time if you want to. It's just a little more tedious. It's obviously a little faster and more efficient if you can separate it into a perfect and a leftover. You're done in one step. If if you have to do the little prison break style there, um, it's a little more involved, right? A little, a lot more step intensive. So here, what about the square root of 40 over 81? Well, we already did the square root of 40. That was two square roots of 10. It's still two square roots of 10. And the square root of 81, that is a perfect square. That is nine. So two square roots of 10 over nine. Let's get four, the square root of 300. Again, if you can see, look, you look down here, 25 goes in there, but there's a better one. 100 goes in there. So look, the square root of 100 is perfect. And then this is the leftovers. It's got to be a square root times a square root because it's, right, that's the only way you can multiply them. So three, and then you take and evaluate the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10, 10 square roots of three. That is called simplest radical form or simplified radical form. I've seen it both ways. And so if they ever say, put it in SRF, that's shorthand for simplest radical form, which would be this, 10 squared to three, okay? If you did that one prison break style, you'd probably go 30 times 10, five times six, two times three, two times five, and so then you do this big laundry list, two times two, times three, times five, times five, and then groups of two. There's a, remember, they don't put the two there in square roots, but it's there. It's, you know, what times itself gives you that number. And so there's a group of two, they break out of prison, but only one lives. There's a group of two, they break out of prison, but only one lives stuck in prison. Three. And then two times five is 10 squared to three. So that's the different way of looking at it where you're not trying to figure out factors of perfect squares that go in. I've had students that really like this way. I don't mind that way if the index is up there. If it's three or four or five, I don't know any fifth roots off the top of my head. And so it's kind of hard to get that broken out, but it's super easy to see a group of five and do it out. And so, um, Let's see, number five, up oh, to trying to trick us, the square root of 15 is the square root of 15. That's three times five, there isn't a perfect square in there. Three isn't there, five isn't there. So that's just stays the square root of 15. Um, let's look at, what if it's the square root of x to the seventh? Oh, so this is interesting then, look, we could go like this and say, perfect is even powered things, because remember we're dividing by two. So x to the sixth, and then the leftovers would be what you have to multiply that to get x to the seventh. Well, that would be x to the first, right? So then what is the square root of x to the sixth? That is x to the third power. And then there's still square roots of x. Okay. If you do it like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. That's x to the seventh. And then groups of two escape, but only one lives. Escape, but only one lives. Escape, but only one lives. Stuck, because it's a, just a single one. So the prison is still there, and x is stuck inside that one x. And then um, x to the third square roots of x. So that was a lot more tedious than this. This is faster. All right.
Mathematically, this way is a little more explanatory. You're, you're getting a good explanation of what happened. It's just, it's a lot quicker if you can find these perfect squares as factors and get them separated into the two things, perfect and left over, and then just evaluate it. All right, so let's see. We got the square root of 20 over x to the 16th. Okay, so that is the square root of 20 on top and the square root of x to the 16th on bottom. So the bottom, we can evaluate right away. That's x to the 8th. That's perfect. It's an even power thing, so it's perfect. And so no square roots, no jail, no nothing like that. The square root of 20, however, that is, let's think about that. The square root of 20 is the square root of 4. That's perfect. You look at things less than 20. 16 doesn't go into it evenly. 9 doesn't go into it evenly. 4 does. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and then that's 2 square root of 5. So 2 square root of 5 over x to the 8th would be that answer. And then the last one. See, now this is one where you might want to do the prism break method. Here, let me show you what it looks like quickly. So the efficient way would be, okay, okay, okay. I need perfect cubes in the lead, perfect cubes, and then this is the leftover bin. Okay, so perfect cubes. Well, 27 is a perfect cube. 27 times two is 54. X to the sixth, that is a perfect cube because six divides evenly by three. Three goes into six twice. So if it divides into it evenly, it's perfect. This one doesn't. It's not perfect. So what's less than eight, that is divisible by three. Um, seven, nope, six, yes. So six, but now we need y squared in the leftover bin. Because when I multiply this by this, I gotta get that back. So 27 times 2 is 54, x to the 6th is there, y6, y2 is y8, okay? And now we evaluate it in one shot. So the cube root of 27, x6, y6 is 3, x2, y2, and then that's who's left in prison, is the cube root of 2, y squared, okay? If you do this the other way, Let's see, 54 is what? Six times nine, and that's two times three, and that's three times three. So we got two times three times three times three. And then there are, I don't know if I'll have enough room here, um, six X's and eight Y's. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, just enough room. Okay, and here, I'll use a different color marker for the, who gets out? So we got, we need groups of three to get out of this prison. So three of them, but it's not a happy story. Only one lives. Three X's, only one lives. Another three X's, only one lives. Three Y's, only one lives. Another three Y's, only one lives. And now who's st left stuck in prison? This The number two is, and two Y's are. So it's the cube root, don't forget the cube part of it, two Y squared. And then, oh, we gotta multiply this back in. So three X squared, Y squared, cube roots of two Y squared. So, a lot more tedious. You had to write out all of those things and do it. I've seen uh, students do hodgepodge. I've seen them do the number part this way and the variable part just divide by the three, you know, split it up that way. So you, you can do it whichever way you want. Okay. Do not forget to cube on the two. That is a very, very common mistake. All righty, Daggy. Let's keep going on 8-2 here. So
So we got um, the square root of 20 over the square root of 5. So look, in this one, we can write it all under the same uh, root, 20 over 5. And then 20 does divide by 5, right? 4 times. So it's the square root of 4, which is a pretty easy question, too. Okay. How about number 2 here? 7 cube roots... 48y4 over the cube root of 2y. Okay, so again, the 7 is out, but we could do the cube root of 48y4 over 2y. So what happens there? Oh, this one's a little more difficult. So we can reduce it. It is 7 cube roots of 24y cubed. 24 is not a perfect cube. There is a perfect cube hidden in there. I just erased them. Doggone it. Oh, well, those are squares anyway. So this is cube. So that's different. So what times self times self times self is a perfect cube? That would be 8. So in the perfect bin, we got 8y cubed. In the leftover bin, we got 3, right? Because 3 times 8 is 24. y cubed. So now this is 7 times the cube root of 8y cubed times the cube root of 3. So that is 2y and cube roots of 3 and 14y cube roots of 3. That's what that one looks like. If you wanted to do it from here the other way, um, what Emily called prison break style, it would be this. We would have um, the cube root of 2 times 2 is uh, 4 times 2 times 3 is 6, right? 4 times 6 is 24. And then 1, 2, 3 of them. And now we need groups of 3 to get out of this prison. That's the key to get out is groups of 3. But only one lives. Only one lives. And that one's stuck. And so 14y cube roots of 3. I don't know. I think this might have been easier than that. Um, up to you. Whichever way makes more sense to you, that's how I want you to do it. I, I don't care if you do it this way or if you do it this way. Notice it's the same correct answer either way. Like I said, when you're thinking of the mathematical concept, this way is probably better because you're looking at the primes and you're actually seeing what is getting out of the cube root. Where this way, it's more efficient because it's a one-step deal. After you get it separated into perfect cubes and leftovers, it's one and done. Where this was a little more tedious, a, little, a few more steps. But if you understand it way better one way or the other, then just stick with that way. All right, um, and then we're looking at the distance formula really quick. I don't know if Newton has it in here in this spot, but I'm gonna put it in here. This is where it makes most sense. So the distance formula is the change in y quantity squared and the ch plus the change in x quantity squared. And that is the distance on a coordinate plane. If you graph two points, so if I graph negative 5 and 8 and negative 2 and 2, and I want to find the distance, I just jam them into here. So look, this is x1, y1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and it's just a plug and chug. So we got negative 5, remember the minus there, and then uh, negative 2 squared plus 8. Oh, I guess 2 minus 8. It doesn't matter which one. I did this one first. So here, I guess, in my whole thing. This was the second one. This was the first one. Um, so I'm going to do 2 minus 8 squared. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter. It does not matter which one you call first the first term and which one you call the second one in this case. Because... I'm taking the difference and squaring it. So look, this is negative 5 plus 2, quantity squared. This is negative 
negative six squared. And so that is negative three squared plus negative six squared. So think about this, think about this now. It doesn't matter which one I put first or second. If I had those switched around, I would have eight minus two, and that is six. And six squared is 36, and negative six squared is 36. So at this point is where it doesn't matter anymore. Nine plus 36. So if I had those two switched around, it would have ended up being two minus, or plus five. Two plus five is positive three. Three squared is nine. So it really doesn't matter which you determine to be the first point and the second point, okay? So we get the square root of 45, and then there's a perfect square hidden in there. That's nine times five. And so the square root of nine times the square root of five, rather. And then what is the square root of nine? That's three, three squares of five, okay? So that is the distance in simplified radical form, SRF, three squares of five. And then the other one, Really doesn't have to do with square roots, but usually when you do distance formula, you also look at the midpoint formula, which is also pretty easy. They give you a point, they give you another point. What you do on these are you add up the x's and divide by two. You average them, basically. You add up the y's and divide by two. And that is the midpoint. So... Um, negative 5 plus negative 2 over 2, and 8 plus 2 over 2. And so we got negative 7 halves, which you can make negative 3.5, and we got 10 over 2, which is 5. So negative 3.5 comma 5 would be exactly mid the midpoint between this point and that point if you graphed them on the coordinate plane. Okay? That is it for 8.2.